Hi, welcome to this video on rationalizing. Now, you may recall that in the previous video in this series, I showed you that if we had to square root a fraction, it was exactly the same as square rooting the top and the bottom of the fraction. So in other words, here we've got square root of 16 over the square root of 5. And this gave us 4 for the square root of 16, but the square root of 5, we can't break down any further, so it's just 4 over root 5. That's the exact value. But I showed you that if we did this on a calculator, it didn't actually display this value. What it does is it rationalizes the denominator. What this means is that whenever we get square roots in the denominator of a fraction, we have a method that we use to get rid of the square root. And this method, as I say, is called rationalizing the denominator. And it works like this. What we're doing with this fraction is to multiply it by 1. No big deal. 4 over root 5 times 1, or anything times 1, is not going to change the value. But it's how we create this one. What we do is we take the root that we've got in the denominator here, in this example it's root 5, and we multiply top and bottom by root 5. So what we have got then is the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5. This is 1 still, okay? So it's not going to change the value, but it will change the appearance of it. Because what we get is 4 times root 5, which is 4 root 5. And on the bottom here, we have root 5 times root 5, which is the square root of 25, or just simply 5. Okay? So you can see that we haven't got a square root in the denominator. And this is the kind of value that you'll see when you do this kind of sum on a calculator. Now I've got some more examples here that are going to demonstrate this further. You might like to try this one here, 3 over root 7. What do you think we have to do to rationalize this? Well, I'll give you a moment just to have a go if you feel that uh, you can do it. Just pause the video, come back when you're ready, and I'll take you through the solution. Okay, so how did you get on if you had a go? Well, let's put equals and let's just copy this down as being 3 over the root of 7. And to do this one, we need to get rid of that root 7. So we need to times it by 1, and we create that 1 by multiplying top and bottom by root 7. And what we get then is 3 times root 7 is 3 root 7. And this is divided by root 7 times root 7, which is going to be 7. Okay, the square root of 49. It doesn't simplify any further. If you did this on a calculator, that's what you would get. Now in my next example, you'll notice there's something different. I've introduced now a number as well as the square root in this one term in the denominator. And there's two ways that we could do this. There's a good way and there's the poor way. I'll just give you a moment just to pause the video. Have a go and see uh, how what you come up with, okay? Okay, welcome back then if you had a go at this. So let's just copy down the fraction 2 over 5 root 3. Now what did you multiply top and bottom by? Was it 5 root 3? Well, it will work if you do 5 root 3, but it's not the best way of doing it. We just need to multiply top and bottom by root 3. I will do 5 root 3 in a moment, OK? And you can compare the solutions. They'll end up being exactly the same, but one is more efficient than the other. 
So let's just have a look at what we get here. 2 times root 3 is going to be 2 root 3. And then in the denominator, we're going to have root 3 times root 3, which is 3. Multiply it with the 5 and you get 15. And this doesn't simplify any further. So the answer then is 2 root 3 over 15. Now I did say that I'd show you how we could do it by multiplying top and bottom by 5 root 3. Let's do it again and we can compare our solutions. So we've got 2 over 5 root 3 and this time it's going to be 2 over 5 root 3 again. We're multiplying it by 1 but this 1 is created by multiplying top and bottom by 5 root 3 over 5 root 3. And if we do this, what we've got is 2 times 5, which is 10. So you end up with 10 root 3. And this is divided by, and now we've got 5 times 5, which is 25. And root 3 times root 3 is 3. 25 times 3 is 75. It looks different to this, but... When you notice that you can divide top and bottom here by 5. 5's go into 10 twice and 5's go into 75 15 times. Dividing top and bottom by 5 is really what we've got here. Okay, When we multiply by 5, these two 5's would cancel out, just leaving us with multiplying top and bottom by root 3. It was unnecessary then to multiply top and bottom by that extra 5. So I would suggest that this is a better method. So I'm just going to put good here, okay, and this one, well it's right, but I would say it's a poor method. Now with these next two examples, again there's a difference between these examples and the ones that we've just been doing up here. Do you know what that is? Well. These examples have two terms now in the denominator. The 3 being one term and the root 2 being the next. They're separated by the minus here. Whereas in all these examples, we just had one term in the denominator. Okay? So how do we do ones like this where we've got two terms? Well, we copy down the question again that we're given. So in this one, it's 5 over... 3 minus root 2. And what we do is, again, we've got to multiply it by 1 to keep the same value, but we multiply top and bottom by 3, not minus root 2, but we switch the sign here. So if it's a minus, we go to a plus. If it were a plus, we switch it to a minus. So we multiply top and bottom by 3 plus root 2. OK, and what this will do will be that it will get rid of the, any square roots in the denominator. So let's just try it out and you'll see. We've got 5 times these two terms. Now I could write 5 times 3, which is 15, plus 5 times root 2, which is 5 root 2. 15 plus 5 root 2. But then I'm going to want to factorise that. So I'm just going to leave it as 5 bracket 3 plus root 2, which is what we would get if we factorised it. So no need to really expand that. But when it comes to the denominator here, if we're multiplying 3 minus root 2 with 3 plus root 2, think of these in their brackets, OK? So we're multiplying two brackets together. We would do 3 times the 3, which would be 9. Then we'll do 3 times plus root 2, which would be plus 3 root 2. Then we'll go on to do minus root 2 times each of these terms. Minus root 2 times 3 is going to be minus 3 root 2. And finally, you'll have minus root 2 times plus root 2, which will be minus 2, the square root of 4 in other words, so minus 2. Now, 
when we tidy this up, the top is just 5 times 3 plus root 2. And then it's all divided by. And what we notice here now is that 3 root 2 minus 3 root 2 cancels out. Cancels out those square roots. We're just left with 9 minus 2, which is 7. So no roots in the denominator. Now, you might like to try this one. Again, we've got two terms in the denominator. I'll give you a moment just to pause the video here. Have a go. See what you can come up with. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So to do this one, again, we'll just copy down what we're given. That's 3 over 5 root 3 plus 2 root 2. And we need to multiply this by 1. But that 1 is created by taking each of these two terms but switching the sign. So multiplying top and bottom by 5 root 3 minus 2 root 2. And we'll just multiply the bottom again by 5 root 3 minus 2 root 2. So what do we get? Well, I'm just going to write 3 bracket all of that, OK? I don't think there's any need to expand it out. So we'll just write 3 bracket, 5 root 3 minus 2 root 2. If you did expand it out, you'd get 15 root 3 minus 6 root 2. So no harm in that, but I feel that you'd want to factorise that and you'll get that result. But when it comes to the denominator, again we're multiplying essentially two brackets together. So we do 5 root 3 times 5 root 3. So we've got root 3 times root 3, which is 3 times 5 times 5. In other words, 3 times 25, which is going to be 75. Then you're going to have 5 root 3 multiplied by minus 2 root 2, which is going to be minus 10. That's the 5 times the 2. And you've got root 3 times root 2, which is the square root of 6, root 6. Now we need to go on to 2 root 2 times 5 root 2. Now we need to go on to 2 root 2 multiplied by 5 root 3. And that's going to be plus 10, 2 5's are 10, and root 2 times root 3 is root 6. So you've got plus 10 root 6. And lastly, we're going to have 2 root 2 multiplied by minus 2 root 2. So that's going to be a minus value. And then we've got 2 times 2, which is 4, and root 2 times root 2, which is 2. So you've got 4 times 2, which is 8. So tidying this up, we've got the top here, the numerator, which is 3 times 5 root 3 minus 2 root 2. And this is all divided by, and you can see this time, minus 10 root 6 plus 10 root 6, they cancel one another out. And you get 75 minus 8, which is 67. And you end up with a denominator here with no roots in at all. So we've rationalised it. So, well done if you had a go and got this right. And if not, that you're now able to follow my methods. And also that you're able now to see through these examples how to rationalise any denominator.